the egg consists of an outer layer called the corona radiata. Underneath is another protective layer, the zona pellucida. Both layers must be penetrated by the sperm cell in order to reach the cell nucleus that contained 23 different chromosomes. Each chromosome contains DNA. DNA is the blueprint for building our body cells. At a speed of about 3 to 4 millimeters per minute, something else makes its way from the other side of the fallopian tube. Sperm cells, thousands of them, and barely visible. They all have only one goal, reaching the ovum. All with an eye on that single prize. But only one of those sperm will be crowned the victor. As soon as one lucky sperm cell succeeds in penetrating the egg, the egg immediately undergoes a chemical reaction that prevents other sperm cells from following suit. Then, the chromosomes carried by the sperm and egg come together, and the egg is officially fertilized. The fertilized egg then begins a rapid descent to the uterus. Over the next seven days, the human embryo undergoes multiple cell divisions in a process called mitosis. At the end of this transition period, the embryo becomes a mass of very organized cells, called a blastocyst. Once the embryo reaches the blastocyst stage, approximately five to six days after fertilization, it breaks out of its protective covering and begins the process of implantation in the uterus. Three germ layers form from the primitive streak and node. This process is called gastrulation. The germ layers ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm eventually differentiate into various tissues and organs. In the course of the third week of development, neurulation occurs. At that time, the foundation for the central nervous system is laid. The neural groove is formed, closing from the center to the sides. At the sides, small bumps called somites can be seen. The neural groove becomes the neural tube, which later formed, for example, spinal cord and brain. Those cells later become the neural networks, which enable us to think. In the fourth week of development, this process is almost complete. The embryo is still in the amnion, which is filled with amniotic fluid that has numerous functions. The optic placodes, which are the basis for the inner ear, can be seen. And a heart is already pumping blood through the intra-embryonic blood vessels. The yolk sac and the body stalk continue to nourish the embryo. Beak, three pairs of pharyngeal arches appear. In addition, the upper limb buds are visible first, followed by the lower limb buds. The embryo is now curved in a C shape. Caudal eminence is tail-like in shape. The somites, which give rise to the cells forming the skeletal muscles and components of the skin, among other things, can still be identified. 
the embryo continues to grow rapidly, measuring approximately 4 to 5 millimeters by the end of the fourth week. The lens placodes and olfactory pits are formed. The leaner arms and hands, as well as legs and feet, can be already well identified. The hands will develop from paddles to separate fingers by the eighth week. The embryo is about 23 millimeters long by the middle of the eighth week. The legs will not lose their webbed feet until a few days after the hands. Embryogenesis turns into fetal genesis in the ninth week, and in the third month, that is, from the twelfth week on, the fetus already has a human-like appearance. The eyelids are closed. The skin is translucent. In the following weeks, the fetus grows and the ossification of the fetal skeleton takes place, so that the bones are clearly visible on ultrasound images by the 16th week. In addition, the body is completely covered with downy lanugo hairs, which help, among other things, to keep the vernix secreted by dedicated cells on the skin. The vernix protects the skin from direct contact with the amniotic fluid. From about the 18th week, 28th week, the hair on the head, eyebrows, and eyelashes continue to grow. In addition, the eyes open. The fetus gains a lot of mass in the last few months, and the lanugo hairs and the vernix gradually fade away. It is also slowly getting tighter and tighter in mom's belly. At first, the fetus is supplied by the body stalk and yolk sac, but then more and more by the umbilical cord and placenta. Since the fetus possesses both the DNA of the mother and of the father, the blood of the fetus must not mix with the blood of the mother. The placenta is responsible for this. It is responsible for the exchange of substances between mother and fetus. The chorionic villi, which were previously completely distributed over the chorion, have regressed to other parts of the uterus. The remaining villi are part of the placenta. Maternal blood, rich in oxygen and nutrients, enters the intervillous space via the arteries. Veins carry away the oxygen and nutrient-poor blood. The chorionic villi extract oxygen and necessary nutrients from the mother's blood. Nutrients include carbohydrates, amino acids, fats, vitamins, and iron. Oxygen and nutrients are then transported to the fetus via the veins with the help of the umbilical cord. However, waste products also reach the villi via the arteries. This allows the fetus to release its waste products, such as carbon dioxide and urea of these substances. After about 38 weeks, the fetus is fully developed. It measures 50 centimeters and weighs around 3,000 grams. The birth takes place now or in the next two to four weeks. <laughs>